Spud Alford's life always revolved around athletics. In high school, he excelled in track, football, and baseball, and went on to play at the University of Southern Mississippi. Then one day in 1976, he saw something on TV that would change his life. I was working at Sears, paying my way through college, and uh, happened to notice on, in the Appliance Center a TV, a fellow by the name of Bruce Jenner. I'd never watched the Olympic Games before, never heard the word decathlon, but I fell in love with what I saw as he carried the American flag around the, the track that particular day. He began training immediately for the 1980 Olympics and spent the next four years preparing for Moscow. While participating in the trials in Eugene, Oregon, however, his plans were derailed. Got through eight events and got to the ninth event, which is the javelin. In the javelin, you've got this boot that has spikes in the heel. So when you plant your foot, you better make sure that's where you want it. And uh, planted and my knee just exploded to the left. And you know, there I lay in front of 30,000 people and basically the dream ended there. President Carter announced that year that the U.S. would be boycotting the Moscow Olympics because of the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. But that was the least of Spud's concerns. That same year, he began to feel a chronic pain in his groin. But, you know, I was so focused on that gold medal and my task at hand that decathletes were so used to pain every day that it was just one more pain. So I just let it go for actually one year. Spud eventually saw his doctor, who examined him and did a CAT scan. The news was not good. They came into my room with my parents and, and a preacher, and obviously I knew they weren't bringing football scores. And the doctor walks over to my bed and he said, Spud, we have found a grapefruit-sized tumor under your right rib cage. It's much worse than we thought. Sadly, Spud was so focused on an Olympic medal, he had been using anabolic steroids during his training, which may have caused the tumor. The doctor prescribed major surgery, and Spud prepared for the worst. Later that evening, he received a visit from an old friend. About 30 minutes later, this fellow came walking into my room, Bobby Banks from Hattiesburg, Mississippi. We knew each other. He said he was at home doing his devotion with his family, and uh, he felt like the Lord spoke to him, not audibly. And I said, I want you to go to the Forest General Hospital. Spud's there with cancer. I want you to go pray for him. I'm going to heal him tonight. Banks laid hands on Spud, praying for his healing. He prayed this incredible prayer for me, uh, unlike I'd ever heard before, the sincerity in his voice and, and the way he just looked at me. And I sort of pepped up. And the next day or so, they came into my room and said, we've got to mark you for a, a, an extensive surgery. Doctors then performed a second CAT scan. And they did the CAT scan again and came into my room that evening and said, but it doesn't look like there's a tumor there today. We're, we're not really sure what's happened. We believe it's there. These machines generally don't make a mistake. I actually saw both x-rays. I saw the mass, and it was clear this time. And he underwent chemotherapy for a short period as a follow-up, but the tumor has never reappeared. Even after this miracle, though, Spud still tried to hold God at arm's length. He began working to rehabilitate his knee and started training for the 1984 Olympics. He also began to drift from God. But the further I got away from that event, the more I got back into the, the normal way I felt about training and life. And Looking strong, Spud Alford has the lead. Former all around athlete wins the second heat. I was on the campus of Southern Miss uh, one day, and I was in front of the student union in my car. And I heard this gentleman singing uh, on his guitar out in front there in the lawn. A young evangelist named Rice Brooks was there speaking to anyone who would listen. I listened to the, the songs and I began to cry. And when Rice Brooks got up there with his Bible and began to preach the word unlike I'd ever heard before in my life, I knew that that day my life would never be the same. Brooks invited the students to a meeting that night where Spud accepted Christ. And I just maybe for the first time ever earnestly spoke with God and said, I believe in you. I've always believed in you. I just, things I want to do first that I thought were more important than making you complete Lord of my life. Spud's Olympic dreams eventually faded and he went through several challenges in his personal life. He then moved to Georgia and married Kathy. Spud always dreamed of starting a business that involved his love for sports. One evening in 1989, he got an idea and Zelo Sport was born. 
The company developed a board game based on finger football and has since expanded into soccer, baseball, and golf. Although the company has faced some challenges, God has proven himself time and time again. You know, God's just continue to bless everything that we've done because we've kept him in the middle of everything that we've done. He sits at our boardroom. He directs everything that we do. Spud says he has finally learned to trust God in every area of his life. You know, I've, I've tried a lot of things in Spud's ability in my life, from a decathlon to relationships to companies, and I failed at most. And I eventually uh, realized that, yes, he is, in fact, concerned about everything in our lives. He also shares his testimony every chance he gets to help him remember the things God has done in his life. I always tell them when I start, it's probably going to do more for me than it is for you today. Because what it's going to do for me is help me to remember laying in that hospital bed, what I went through, what I lost, and what I've gained by allowing the Lord to take over my life.